going there. Have this. There we go. We're recording. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? We're recording. We're streaming. We're okay. All right. Fine. But hardly anybody's waiting to come on today. So, what the hell? It may just be uh, you and I, Lynn Lafrisco. Let's see here. He should be joining me in a second. Here. Will he? There we go. There's Lynn LaFrisco. Right. Okay. He's connecting his audio. Then he should be connecting his video. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. He's there. It's, it's just you and I. Well, what oh. happened? Where is everybody? Wait a minute. Here comes Rick. Well, it is a holiday today. Yes, it is. Marjorie kept saying to me, are you going to be doing a thing today? And I went, yeah. She's, why not? Why? And I, yeah. why not? What else do I have to do with my miserable, pathetic life? Same. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to give Shecky something to do with his well, pathetic life. Pathetic he life. Had, it sounded like he had something to do, but he's coming anyway. No, well, he's here. <laughs> yes, I had a documentary to watch today. What, uh, what, what documentary? This is Francis X. Bushman. This is Francis X. Bushman? Yes. Where did you find that? It's playing right now at Cinecon online. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. And I had to make a decision, and you see my decision. I won over Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> yes, you did. Now, you probably should. Charlie, you ever heard of Francis X. Bushman? Yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. what do you know? How about you, Len? No. Okay, no for Len, explain who, uh, who Francis X. Bushman is, Shecky. Francis X. Bushman was an actor in the teens, 20s, continuing on. Mm -hmm. He played Masala in Ben-Hur in 25. Right. right. And continued to work up into the um, 60s. His last role was on Batman. Oh, really? really? What part did he play? Oh, some, I don't know. One of those. One of those, yeah. yeah. So uh, he so he kept going quite a long time. Well, actually, the guy who kept him working all the time, <laughs> the guy who kept him working all the time was uh, was Demille. No, it wasn't Demille. Demille kept putting him in a lot of his pictures, didn't? No, he? no, I don't think he ever worked for Demille. I think he, I bet he did in Ten Commandments or. Well, yeah, Henry Wilcoxon worked for. Demille. Oh, yes, you're right about that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah, here know who Henry Wilcoxon was? Uh, that one's exactly okay, that. we finally stumped Charlie. He doesn't know who. who explain Henry Wilcoxon. This is going to be a great show today, by the way, folks. Henry Wilcoxon was a working actor. Never a star. Mm -hmm. Never a, quote, a player. If right. You, want to, you know, where Francis X. Bushman was considered in the teens, you know, the heartthrob of the nation. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? So. Yeah. That was, that was my old job. <laughs> no, well, Coxon was like, became associate director for DeMille. So yeah. he was in all the DeMille pictures in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. Okay. Well, well Coxon also probably lived his entire life with people making fun of his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Bushman? <laughs> And Francis X. Bushman. You're right. Bushman and Will Coxman. Bushman, Bushman even turns up in an episode of Burns and Alley. Alan. Sorry. Oh, really? Oh, he wasn't, that. wasn't he related to Fanny Lipschitz? <laughs> <laughs> no, Beverly Bain. Well, what well, I, six or seven wives. You notice how nice Marjorie's picture looks now because she's using yeah. her new iPad. Oh, nice. Yes, but she's also not watching tennis. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no, I'm not. He says he said also she's not watching tennis. Oh, <laughs> I become a tennis widow about eight weeks out of the year. You know, first it's the Australian Open, and then it's the French Open, and then it's Wimbledon, <laughs> and then it's the Australian. Uh, no, I, I already said Australian. Open. 
Huh? Then the last one is the U.S. Open. U.S. Open. Yeah. Now both it's happening right now. Both professionals and amateurs can play in the Open. No. That's, no, why they call, so. that's why they called it an open, is what I heard the other day. But that was in the 40s and the 50s when you couldn't be a professional to play in the U.S. Open. Oh, I see. That's right. Okay. All right. Oh, hey. Now you've got to make millions of dollars to be able to play in the open. Here comes Mandy. <laughs> open the millionaire. Yeah. 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 So anyway. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you saw yesterday, Costello won the golf course, got $15 million. Okay, Mandy, are you okay now? I got to turn up my... Were you, was that you, Marjorie? I had to turn up my... Yeah, yeah no, he won $15 million for winning yesterday's golf match. <laughs> hey, Mandy, you got, you got, the, uh, you got the day off? I did, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's Labor Day. <laughs> yeah. Where are we? Is that your living room? They're not that. They're not that big a sleigh driver. Yeah, that's your living room, right? You're sitting on the floor, and you probably got your your iPad or whatever on the coffee table. I do. <laughs> I'm so predictable, apparently. Yeah, I've, I've got it. Actually, figured Alex out. is a stalker. Huh? Today, today on this episode of Alex Bennett. Boy detective. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, um, uh, I was uh, telling Shecky, and uh, I watched a documentary three times this weekend. <laughs> once because I discovered it. Then once because Buddy Love, who was staying here, hadn't seen it, so I decided to watch it with him. And then Marjorie finally decided, because everybody was saying what a great documentary it was, that she <laughs> wanted to see it. So I had to watch it a third time. And, it, and your point is? I, I never got tired of it. Uh, it's a documentary about uh, Rosemary. Now, how many know who Rosemary was? Okay. I, I know she was. Dick Van Dyke. You know, Mandy, you know who Rosemary was? Dick Van Dyke. I actually do. I used to wonder what her last name was. <laughs> and she never, she, that was her name, Rosemary. Well, she she also, when she was young, she was called Baby Rosemary. Right. Oh. Yeah. Didn't she play Mary Tyler Moore's mother too? <sighs> no. I think she did. No, that was Nancy Walker. Yeah, that was Nancy Walker. Right. The black bow. The black bow. Yeah. Nancy Walker played Rhoda's mother. Yeah. Yeah, but who played? Uh, uh, I don't think it was. No, Rhoda. it was. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of her name. It was a working actress. Yeah, well, they're uh, apparently because you got the job. <laughs> yeah, but not like you know, um, Madonna wasn't playing Mary Tyler Moore's mother. Let's say right, right. right. Uh, Nanette Fabre, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, Fabre. Nanette Fabre. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Oh, I just very great talent. By I the just way. saw. I just saw Nanette Fabre. I was watching YouTube. And I was watching Sid Caesar do. Oh, Caesar's Hour. Well, Galliacci, and which is a takeoff on Pagliacci, which is one of the funniest things I ever saw him do. It's just wonderful. And um, she sang in it to take off on opera, and she was perfect. Well, she won. She won an Emmy for that show. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that was Annette Fabre and not uh, Rosemary. Right. But the documentary on Rosemary, to begin with, she started out, in, in, she was, I think, the first child star in movies, pretty much? No, I mean, you could say... Uh, Baby, yeah. Peggy. Peggy. Oh. Baby Peggy. Baby Peggy and things. But she, no, she worked in the Vitaphone short, so she never made, can we call it a comedy or dramatic short? or feature feature well she was in international house yes but she sang that's yeah. all she did in international yeah, it was almost like it was a short in its own way but well that was he, that again was that thing it's like you know the wc fields are tuning in the tv and oh there's rosemary oh there yeah right but at five years old she had this voice that was like an adult and she was a sensation. She had a radio show at five years old. 
What? A national show on NBC at wow. five years old. Yeah. And as we talked yesterday, she opened the Flamingo. Well, yes. we'll, we'll get to that in a second. She was yeah. the favorite. She was a favorite person, a favorite kid to Al Capone. And he, and he said, I'm going to watch out for you. You know, and he was all the gangs always watched out for her all her life. Wow. Because Capone put out the word, you take care of this kid. Okay. And it wasn't anything, it, it wasn't anything nefarious or anything like that. They just liked her. And she wound up opening the Flamingo in Las Vegas when Bugsy Siegel opened it up. Wow. At the first night, she was the act along with Jimmy, Jimmy Durante. Yeah, 46, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I think Xavier Cougat's orchestra. <clears throat> that was the opening show at the Flamingo. So she started Vegas. Okay. Uh, and then we go on, you know, you go on to the rest of her life with the Dick Van Dyke show. And then, uh, then a lot of people remember her from uh, who's Hollywood who? Squares. Hollywood Squares. And What's that noise? And, yeah, what, it's gone now. It's gone now. Uh, uh, at Hollywood Squares. And then she did four, what was it called? Four? Four Girls Four. Four Girls Four, in which it was her and Rosemary Clooney. Helen O'Connell. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other one. Uh, we remembered last night. I forget right this moment. Yeah. And she has had, she had all her life just as a great career, you know, with great highlights and great moments. Um, and and she, I was telling Alex yesterday, I went to a wedding now six years ago. She was sitting next to me for the wedding at the table. Wow. Yeah, and who was sitting, on the, woman. Who was sitting on the other side of you? Uh, Dick Van Dyke, Ed Asner. Larry Matthews, etc. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was a star-studded wedding, I imagine. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, it, it was how it was the marriage of a guy who's like a fan of these old people and has kept in contact with them and does a show with them. And so they all came to his wedding. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, you'd look over to the right and there's Jane Withers sitting with Margaret O'Brien. You look over to your left and there are the kids from my three sons. And then you looked over here and there, whoever was left from the Lucy show, you know, yeah, those kind of weddings. I watched another documentary that's on uh, Showtime called Gossip. Have you seen this thing at all? This is about uh, Cindy Adams. Yeah. 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 You said it was terrible. I didn't say it was terrible. I just said it, I didn't say it was terrible. You asked me if it was terrible. Did I watch it and you what, said you said no. was, was it good? And I said it was okay. Who's Cindy Adams? Oh, Cindy. Cindy. Well, let's well, go to Shecky again. He gives a better explanation than I do. She became she married a man named Joey Adams, who was one of those. I want to call him a borscht belt comedian. He was a B comic. A B comic. Yeah. And then she became a columnist for the New York Post. Right. That yeah. comic six. What? Very right wing. Very, very right wing. Good pals with Trump. You know. Yes. But all everything she ever says in this documentary, where's that audio coming from? I hope it's not me. Uh, no, it's not you. Um and what kind of audio is it? I don't know. Anyway, what, what are you hearing? I'm hearing something. It's, talking it's, it's not me, is it? No, it's not you. Why is it me? Oh, you're hearing an echo back from somebody. Yeah, an echo. Uh, just, maybe it's you, Alex. I doubt it. I, but wait a minute. Maybe I can stop it if I do this. Are you there, everybody? Uh, yes. I guess yeah. I stopped it. Sometimes uh, the uh, noise can't, the, what do we call it? The, the Q46 space modulator? No, <laughs> no. no the, the thing is, uh, you know, that they do to cancel out certain audio and so on. 
But again, Cindy Adams is a very right wing. She's about 92 now, I think. Uh, yes, exactly. You got it right. Uh, very, very right wing. Uh, friends with Trump. Friends with Trump. Thought uh, um, our former mayor of this town was a great guy. Oh, adores Giuliani. Adores Giuliani. Ah. Yeah. And she works for the Post. What can we say? You know? Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's interesting in that it's all about gossip. And, but it, it, the trouble is, it, it, the whole emphasis is on her as the linchpin of the documentary. So everything revolves around her, even though there are other people involved. You don't hear much from Liz Smith or anybody like that, you know. Uh, what happened? Your audio's off, Shay. You're muted. You're muted. Unmute, unmute, Shay. Oh, he's got a call going. Hey, you just oh. muted it again. Oh, he's got a call coming in. He's got a call. Oh. Uh. He's trying I'm to talking to Rosemary. Alex, I was wondering, you know, since you said Giuliani, I mean, that guy was 20 years ago during 9-11 was the And the his star. son's running for governor. Well, yeah, but he was the star. And now he has spiraled into this, I don't know what, monster. He's a creep. Uh, yeah, he what, really how did that happen? What, what happened? I think, I think he got that toxic shock syndrome from a MyPillow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Alex, that was, that was the neighbor kid. Calling to tell me Roland Scott died. Okay. I didn't know yeah. he was still alive. But that was two days ago. Right. Yeah. But that's why I hit the mute button. And by the way, program. how old was he? 87. Years young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I heard that Giuliani asked Trump to pay his legal fees. Oh, I'm sure yes, he, he did. did. Yeah. And Trump and Trump told him to go, you know what? Well, oh, Trump, yeah. Trump doesn't have the money. No, <laughs> he can't uh, even fix it. He you can't know who else just died? Went, who died? Did he just announced it was uh, John Paul Belmondo. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Ed Asner. But 88. Good run. Yeah. Hope I live that long. Oh, Ed Asner was a week ago. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The news 92. guy. You're talking about the news guy on. Yeah, Willard. Yeah. Willard Scott. We just. Yeah. They're going to put his ashes in a smucker's jar. <laughs> was, wasn't he the guy that played um, Ronald McDonald first? Yes, was that... he was the original Ronald McDonald back okay. in the 50s. Mm -hmm. well, on this documentary, Cindy Adams says she really loved Donald Trump because when Joey died, he was cremated and he wanted his ashes scattered around New York City. So Donald Trump took his Trump helicopter and took no. it up in it and they dumped the ashes out over Central Park. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. So that's why she likes him, because everything with her is, this person was nice to me. Okay? Therefore, I'm very loyal. Yeah? Uh, if, <laughs> if Hitler were nice to you, would you be loyal? Yeah. I mean, how far uh -huh. does loyalty have to go? Well, that's kind of how Trump is. Yeah. yeah. If somebody kissed his ass, then oh, he if thought you just, they were great. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, and she loved she loved Roy Cohn. <laughs> and people people in this documentary they they were all saying what they thought of Roy Cohn, and all they could say was the most evil human being I've ever met. Yeah. You know, and that's the way I described him. I said I I know I probably will never have to look to the, into the face of the devil, but if I did, it would look like Roy Cohn. Mm. I did an interview. I was on a show where I was being interviewed with him. We were kind of debating. And I looked into his eyes, and the, it scared the crap out of me. I mean, were they just dead? They were dead. Yes. They were these, like, black pupils with no life in them. Ugh. You know. Yeah, but look at it this way. You're still alive, and he's been dead for, what, 30 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you win. <laughs> well, I, I looked at him, and I said, how would you feel about the fact that you were responsible for the execution of the Rosenberg? And he said, I feel great about it. And he's looking at me with these eyes, you know, I'm going. Ooh, oh, chill God. down your spine. Yeah, I've never faced evil, but I just did. And, and that's the way these people in the documentary, every last one of them, describe Roy Cohn, the most except, evil man except, I've ever met. Huh? Except, what's her name? Except the, Cindy Adams. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, yeah, because he was nice to her. <laughs> exactly, and he was the guy who uh, who uh, uh, you know taught Trump all about not yes ever yeah he was Trump's mentor never admit your wrong never admit your wrong and uh, never pay it, it, it Roy Cohn did this never pay a bill. Let him come after you. you yeah. Know? I mean, he learned all that from Roy Cohn. So if Roy Cohn was the evilest man that ever lived, Donald Trump is his number two. Yeah, that's you for know. sure. It's amazing. Running yeah. again. He's already declared it. Who? Oh, Trump? Trump. No, he hasn't declared it. He just I'm is running throwing again. it out. Like, I think I'm going to run so I can get some more money from jackasses. Yeah. The only the only tenant of his buildings is paying rent or his packs. So well, all the donors the give money and the thing is yeah, what you're saying there's no one renting it other than his packs that does anybody money. want to rent in that building? I mean, do you want an apartment in that building? His followers. No, it's it's the office tower portion. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. So all the offices are full of these political packs for him. So all these idiots donate money to him. The PACs pay their rent. And and he pays it to himself. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, one thing I never noticed about the Mandy before, and it may be because the lighting is different in your office than it is where you are right now. <laughs> you're, you have red hair. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> Am I? I yeah. I, I have to help it along now. But <laughs> this is how it was when I was a little girl. So I just bottle keep it that way for now <laughs> keep it going <laughs> so you're not one of the ones that during covid said i think i'll let it go gray uh i well i kind of did for a little while but then my hairstylist she ended up opening up she just has one of those salons where it's just one person like yeah. it's in a building has suites yeah so Ooh. we did the masks for a long time and then you know, we still did. We always still did up until yeah. a couple months ago. But uh, how gray did you get from not? Oh, I've been gray since I was 30. Oh, really? Mm hmm I and, went gray early. And so yeah. you, but you decided you don't want to be gray. I feel like I need to at least be 60. <laughs> you know, I'm just, yeah. I guess I'm vain that way. I just don't want to. Well, I don't know. Know. There's nothing wrong with it. Marjorie was coloring her hair till about what two years ago? Till COVID no COVID. Yeah. I stopped in November before COVID. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, it looks good on Marjorie. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. She has good coloring. Your skin's got that good coloring to have gray it's, hair. And you know something? It, it's healthier. Feels better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, all those dyes and everything. And I'm not paying $135 every three weeks plus. <laughs> right. yeah. well, as you get older, you have he to stop calling me. He stopped. He stopped emailing me. Oh, really? He's given it's, up. Uh, going to he's got a hint now. I wonder how many hair stylists have yeah. lost business because of COVID. I think oh. a lot. Because yeah. I notice a lot of women that we know have all gone gray. You notice people on TV use women and so on who've gone gray. And um, you know, they I seem hear, to have I a, hear a, 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 a problem as well. Feed, feed of, uh, of, you got uh, feedback just, again, Alex. What? I know. I, I just... Uh, <laughs> again? Yeah. Well, sometimes there's a thing. There's a... What do they call it? Um, plot, uh, plus uh minus mix minus it, 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 you you sh i should be mix minusing my sound but i don't because it causes problems in and of itself but zoom and skype and so on all have mix minus but sometimes it goes out or stops working and that's when i get that what we call that slap back i call it uh but now i've i've turned you down so uh, and then i brought it back up and it's fine you know but no, what I was going to say, I wonder how many, how many stylists and so on are not getting the business back that they had. Oh, a lot. And there's seven or eight websites on Facebook, all of what, which I joined just to look. I never posted, but just to look and it helped me along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, is, you're, you're all you're all gray now for the most part, as I've noticed. Yeah, I have no color in my hair. This is all natural. Yeah, because I wake up in the middle of the night and I go, Ooh, who's that old lady <laughs> lying next to me? And my my I'm wife did this. Him. My, my wife did the same thing. Way. She did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I do the same thing every morning. I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? You know, what? The I, I dye mine gray so people think I'm old. Well, my big joke is <laughs> that Jackie Coogan was the cutest kid in the world when he worked with Charlie Chaplin and the kid, and then uh, you remember him more as Uncle Fester on the Adams Family. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you wonder what morning Coogan woke up, looked in the mirror and went, what the fuck happened to me? <laughs> he was old. You know, some of that was making drunk it, to know that he was old. Huh? He was too drunk to know that. <laughs> I see. Okay. I can tell you stories. <laughs> That's why we drink. Really? <laughs> let, me, let me kill this again for a second. Uh, that, that, that's why we drink, yeah. That's why I don't. Yeah, well, I've, I've looked at myself recently and gone, you know, what the fuck happened to me? And you know what it was? I never considered myself a good-looking guy at any point in my life. But when I go back and I look at older pictures of me when I was young, I wasn't half bad looking. You know. as, as a baby. What do you mean as a baby? <laughs> Come on. I do. I have that shot right there on the yeah, table. Yeah, but you know, that picture of me that was taken at WIND in Chicago, it's like I'm a game show host. With no, <laughs> with no mustache? No, nothing. Post it. Yeah, I no posted mustache. it from time to time. And for a while, I was using it as my Facebook picture. Mm. You know. Uh, well, you can host Jeopardy now. Yes. Yes. Now there is uh, an absolute clusterfuck, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, didn't these guys do any kind of uh, vetting? Uh, what was it? Vetting. Well, of, you said this guy? I think that what you said about a year or two ago about some other subject about vetting someone. Yeah. I mean, this guy didn't have the best reputation, <laughs> did he? What? This guy didn't have the best reputation. Oh, and, and, oh, oh. Hold on a second. I'm going to mute because to find out who's not calling me. Oh. <laughs> okay. He's got to mute to hear who's not calling. Him. We'll find out who didn't call. I bet, it, I bet it's Tony. I bet it's Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll bet I'll bet any amount of money I got it's Tony because he's not calling this show but he's got to call somebody <laughs> well, he doesn't call me thank goodness wait a minute what oh, is what on. is what is, your key shirt, what is your t-shirt say uh, I, was say I had to get up on my couch my butt was getting numb uh, everybody was every bunny was kung fu fighting oh every bunny every <laughs> bunny yeah. yeah, well, uh, look. Who's my look stockbroker at... to wish me a good Rosh Hashanah? Who? <laughs> my stockbroker. Oh, your stockbroker. You know the difference, Alex, between Kung Fu and Judo? No. Well, Kung Fu is a way of defending yourself, and Judo is what they make bagels out of on Rosh Hashanah. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to put you on mute. <laughs> Charlie, it's my Rosh Hashanah always, joke. Charlie always wears the best T-shirts. Yes. Now, what does the year say today? The Earth rotation really makes my really day. makes. <laughs> my <day. laughs> Look at mine. You know, that's not funny. That's the U.S. Open. That's not funny. No, but it's on my T-shirt. I want a T-shirt. Yeah, probably that's wasted thirty bucks on it. I want a t-shirt that says people who read t-shirts are losers. <laughs> you probably make a lot of money selling that. Where do you or find get a black guy? And let me ask you, uh, Charlie, where do you find all these t-shirts? I get some of them on Amazon, but a lot of them I get just on Facebook. I get these ads because I bought them in the past and they send them. They send so how many t-shirts do you own? Oh, probably 40. Really? That's all? Well, I mean, I've only been doing it for about three years. And they're all scientific in nature. Well, right. that's why I started. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the one about uh, someone losing an eye? What, what was? Yeah, that's uh, the square root of minus 
uh, oh, I love four that. equals two, and it should be two I. And it says, it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. <laughs> <laughs> and there's what, like four Americans who get it? <laughs> yeah. I'm walking around Walmart and I'm sure nobody, people just look through the strangest looks. Yeah, and and I also noticed today with uh, with Bandy, she has an i uh, 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 an Apple Watch. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Is your battery dying on yours? It died yesterday. That was the first time that ever happened to me. I think oh. it's because I didn't really have it on the charger the night before, like I thought I did. I just slapped it on there real oh. quick and didn't pay attention, and it but actually went dead when I was out. I was like, you oh. found the amount of time though that it stays charged is less and less. Mine's getting. <laughs> And that's pretty good. It's, I mean, it's at least the whole day. So I'm that's trying to get down there. Well, I'm waiting to buy the new one, but they're having trouble getting them out or something. You know, what have you? Um, so they're like what four or five hundred dollars, right? Yeah, so for four or five for mine with the cellular and everything. I think it's about five. Yeah. Yeah, but and and you can also uh, turn them in now and get some. Oh, okay, off. that's yeah. good enough. Yeah, if you want to. Because this one's almost three years old. I've actually had it on. I probably three years. will, or maybe I won't, because uh, then Marjorie will get my old watch. You know, <laughs> just like I hope I live long enough to get her old iPad. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have your old iPad. You do, don't you? I gave you an iPad. Yeah, and he didn't want it back when I offered it to you when I got my new iPad. Yeah, I, well, I didn't want to, it's too much trouble to take home. I mean, it's an old iPad. But what happened with Shecky is, he, the, what was it, the button on yours went bad, right? Oh, yeah. It's, so I have, like, the um, accessible thing that I use. Well, there's a, there's a program you can put on it that makes you be able to use a button on the screen to do the same thing. No, it, the program is in the accessibility setting. So it's already there. Oh, okay. So you, but you went for years like that with this. Well, I'm still Apple. using the accessibility button. You, but you, you, you. Alex, the backslap. What? It's back. Backslap. It's back again. Oh boy. What is this today? It's it's a problem. Uh, let me see. Okay. It's labor. And my mine keeps freezing up. Working now. What? Who's freezing up? Mine keeps freezing up, but this is the first time I've done it from this laptop that I just got. Oh, okay, so you, you, is it, are you freezing up now? No, but I don't know why I was doing it earlier. It's just everybody was, I was the only one that was not frozen, but everybody in their little box. Usually I find with Zoom, I don't have that many technical problems. Once in a while, you know. Yeah. Have, but, well, you saw Zoom stock lost like 20% last week. What? Why? Really? Zoom stock lost about why? 20% of its value. Wow. Who's playing it? Zoom? Is everybody going back in offices to work? I guess. I just pulled a joke. I said, who's playing at Zoom stock? <laughs> anyway, so Zoom stock went down 20%. Why? I think on like Friday. Why? I'd have to double check. Why? There was a reason which I just can't remember. because there, If you look it up, there's a story behind it slowing they sales might be, or slowing something or other yeah they might be losing those subscriptions they're like 250 dollars a month or four you know there's somebody at my work that he pays over 400 dollars a month to them and I'm, Zoom? And so he can broadcast to like dozens and dozens and dozens of people or have meetings that are well, huge, I, you know? I i have a i just they just charged me for my yearly charge which is 159 dollars but i yeah. can get up to 100 people but time. this this fellow yeah, I'm not sure what he's a thousand doing. people or whatever you know yeah, well, i've got yeah. a bunch a bunch of clients are shifting back to google meet and teams are mm -hmm. in, in the business world is getting busy again i i stopped getting zoom invites all the time it's about half and a half teams is good teams you can share stuff really easy too so yeah a lot of people run the team do they charge for teams I don't know. No, if you have the the Microsoft package, the Office 365, it's included. What is that noise? Oh, it's Mandy's screen turns on when the buzz starts. I don't know if it's her. Get mute for a second, Mandy. Mute yourself for a second. 
There it is. Yeah. yeah. What was yeah. her? She's a troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, you can put yourself back on, Mandy. Well, get it. Put an earbud in, and then it won't do yeah. that. It will... Okay. Put my earbuds in. No. Yeah. Plug in your earbuds, and then you won't. You won't feedback. Well, no, but that, I don't know what that sound was. It sounded like a. I'll, I'll call back on my phone. Maybe I'll just call back on my phone. Are the, are the aliens invading uh, Atlanta again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So she's going. She'll be back. Okay. Hello, Brian. How are you? Doing? Good. I just told my son to Google the word labor. Yeah. <laughs> he understand why I told him to clean the house and do his laundry. And you had him Google labor? Yeah, he just told me today's his day off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't get to a site that shows the other kind of labor. <laughs> well, no, Marjorie watches so many British shows, she'd spell it L A B O U R. Yeah, they spell tires T Y R E S or something like that. T Y R E S. Tires? And they say aluminium instead of aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. The bonnet. Yeah. Oh, here she comes. She's All the car parts are different. The boot. The boot. The windscreen. Boot is Canadian. There she is. Turn yourself sideways there. Uh, no, turn your camera sideways. Not turn, your your camera. Camera. Yeah, turn yourself sideways. Now turn your camera sideways. Now strike a yoga pose. Ah, there you go. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Wait, wait a minute. Turn, turn, turn it the other no, way. Let's see if it does it. Turn it the yeah. other way. Talking to me. I guess it's not your, on auto I guess, I guess your turn, screen is locked. Stay that. Turn way. your phone the other way. That's fine. Your head. Head. Stay there. You're fine. <laughs> is there anybody watching today? God, we have more people watching us today than normally watch us. So. I'm one. By the way, uh, in, today we're having rallies in Texas for Forced Labor Day. Forced, forced Labor, Labor Day? Day? Yeah. And that's what it is. Forced well, Labor you got some great, great laws they're passing in Texas. Yeah. I'm thinking of moving there just for the laws. Well, <laughs> <laughs> housing, you $10,000 a day turning in people. You know, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. I, I love it. All the all the young kids are turning everybody in as a joke. I guess the website almost crashed. There were so many yeah. people turning in, uh-huh. turning in the governor for having an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, yeah, I heard that they were doing it to just really plug up the system. Yeah, Ted Ted Cruz, I think, had like a thousand people claim that he was paying for abortions. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the right number, but. Well, all you have to do is if you drive somebody to an abortion and somebody turns you in, they can yeah. get $10,000. Yeah. Uber, they're going to take Uber. They're going to sue Uber. They're going to pay all the legal Well, fees. Lyft also said, they sent me yeah. a thing because I use Lyft a lot. And Lyft said that they will pay any driver's expenses in, it, to, if they get hit with this thing. So the way the law is written, you don't even have to know you're driving somebody. I mean, to an abortion. Right. Really? Uh, right. Yeah, you don't even have to know that. If you, if the you problem know, is you that a woman's, a woman's clinic is more than just abortions. I mean, they do everything. Yeah. For- Hair and nails. <laughs> Not- yeah. You know, and there could be a pizza parlor next door that you thought you were driving the woman to the pizza place. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it, you know, it, it, it just, will a law like that hold up if it goes to, you know, I don't think it'll. Hurt. The Supreme so. Court, Alex, is sitting on it. They turned it away. They refused to hear no, no, it. No, no, no. But they, no, they didn't. They just said they weren't going to emergency stay the order. They yeah. weren't going to do anything. No, they weren't going to do an emergency stay. That's what was being yeah. asked. Uh, it's going to have to work its way through the system to come up to the Supreme Court before they and make 16 it. 16 other states are doing the same thing. The problem is, how many women are going to die in childbirth who didn't want to die, who didn't want to give childbirth because of this stupid law? You can't bring those people back. Well, they say there's a large. Gonna, and how many states are going to care for the un, un, unwanted children? Right. Yeah, but yeah. The, you know, the thing is, all you have to do is go to the state next to you and go get an abortion. Yep. If you had the money but some to of them that. can't afford to get yeah, they can. the state. Texas is a big state. There was another group that was sending out emails encouraging people to pack up and mail coat hangers to the governor. <laughs> I thought that was a little extreme, but kind of funny. Yeah. What's going to happen? 
Roe v. Yeah. Wade is going to get is going to get canceled. You won't. I say wheel him in front of a truck. Mm. Yeah. Wheel who in front of a truck? A, park, a parked one, so we don't get you in trouble. The problem is the, the, the governor. Stands. Well, the Everybody. governor can't walk, so if you put him in front of a truck, he'll get run over by his in his wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, let's pass a law in New York and California that anybody in the whole world can sue gun manufacturers because of a mass shooting. There you go. Oh, I mass like. shooting. We don't have mass shootings. Come on. <laughs> get a ten thousand dollar reward for turning them in. Yeah, you have yeah, to wait. Until, wait minute, you have to wait until mass is over. Okay, <laughs> that's another joke there. I have to remove that mass. Yeah, from the doctor. Um. Um. So, uh, anybody doing anything interesting? It's Labor Day after all. I posted my interview with Martin Olson. Oh, really? Yeah. That was fast, fast, fascinating guy. He's the guy who wrote Encyclopedia of Hell and The Conquest of Heaven, but he's also the head writer of Phineas and Ferb and <laughs> Rocco's all these children's programs. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine. Martin Olson. Yeah, here's his here's his new book. It's a comedy book. It's a, after after the demons kill all of us, they invade heaven to go after God. No, I... <laughs> it's, it's a it's a comedy. <laughs> this is. Wait, somewhere here I have the original. Apparently, apparently, um, yeah, here's Encyclopedia of Hell. Uh, apparently, <laughs> Mandy yeah. isn't going to any Labor Day uh, festivities, are you? I'm just going to meet my sister later for yeah. Pete. I went kayaking Saturday. Did you really? Oh, I'm so sore. Really? <laughs> yeah. We went to axe throwing on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> what? Oh, where was that, Lenny? Uh, in Pleasanton. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, they, you throw axes at a thing, you drink beer. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, in axe throwing, where? Oh, in a movie theater. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at kayakers. Oh, yeah. At kayakers. <laughs> we Nobody's ever thrown an axe at me in my kayak. <laughs> do you do kayaking a, a lot, movie. Mandy? No, I haven't. Uh, yeah. I haven't a lot, but right. it was really easy. We were with the Chattahoochee River, very wide. A light little flow there that you know kind of we just rented so they're like rubber or whatever yeah um just for a lot of times we were just kind of different but yeah still doing a right. lot of to keep it straight you know because it kept wanting right. to wear off but was, marjorie did you did kayaking marjorie up in yeah uh, white water rafting what well, no it wasn't white water right we're talking I've about done white water rafting. but i'm not talking about white water rafting I have. I'm talking about Vermont. You went out on the with a kayak. Right. You I go out to... as often as I can. Huh? So we I go out as often as I can. I've got kayaks. We... Wow. It's my, my main activity if I feel like getting some exercise. Got Wait, is, do you have, you have water nearby? Right, look it's kind of hard to kayak without it. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't yeah, there's a lot I, of places. That wasn't what I meant. I was yeah, the kayak. Kind of, there's there's a lot of rivers and lakes around here. The best is you go downtown and and drop in right at the Cuyahoga or it meets the lake meets Lake Erie and kayak through downtown Cleveland. Really? Mm -hmm. Past the steel mills and yeah, out yeah. to the lake. And yeah. That's why in the city I was in yeah. suburban Atlanta, northern Atlanta. Oh really? And, and then there's lots of rural places you go out and you don't see anybody for hours. You, last time I went, there were bald eagles in the tree next to us. Yeah. Wow. It was a lot of fun. Well, I ask Shucky and I what we do for exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Move from the chair to the bed. Does that count? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Does that count as exercise? <laughs> well, as the whole joke goes, I do 50 sit-ups every morning. Well, that's how many times it takes me to get out of bed. <laughs> but, um, mm. uh, but I uh, I do my walk, but I haven't done it in the last couple of days. I've just been dog tired. So. Is it still flooded over there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a little bit, not much. We, we saw that. Well, you know, again, our mayor didn't know it was going to rain that day. Yeah. By the way, that is one of my one of my stupid human tricks. If if you still had Letterman going, uh, that do you, do you remember what radio show was it? There was a character called Mister Ripple. Yeah, that was um, not Fibber McGee. It was uh, 
It wasn't Gildersleeve, but it was one of those shows. Yeah, well, it was some show I listened to, and they had Mr. Ripple. And I didn't realize the way he got his voice to sound that way is he just took his finger and started talking like this. Uh-huh. Okay. I thought he did it with his throat. So I don't know how to do it. Wow. <laughs> That's good. You I know, might have, been Fibber, might have been Fibber, McGee, and Molly. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, so Mr. Ripple is the reason I got that stupid human trick going. Because <laughs> I thought that was the way he did it. Uh, which is... We saw the Ten Rings Saturday morning. The what? The Ten Rings, the Marvel movie. Oh, oh, the you mean the Jap- uh, the Ch- Asian one? Yeah, Shang-Chi. Yeah, yeah Shang-Chi is very good. It was? Yeah, I like that. They say it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I like that guy on Kim's Convenience. He's 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 a fun actor. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so so uh they, they they I guess they figure they did so well with black people with the Black Panther, they're gonna do Asians now, right? Diversity, yep. Inclusion. Yeah. When, when, when are the Jewish superheroes coming out? <laughs> well, don't forget all the writers in the forties were Jewish. Yeah. But there were no Jewish Jewish superheroes. There was the Hummus Avenger. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm trying to think of something here, a joke, but I can't come up with one. We used to throw those razor-edged yarmulkes at people. (laughs) I'm trying to think of what we could use. Like, What would the superhero be named? Just the Talus of Duplication. He would put it on and become multiple juice. (laughs) <laughs> scared the hell out of the white supremacists you know it's back on but i just love there's more is, uh, how many here uh, are any of you guys watch what we do in the shadows yeah what a, is that a funny show or what sometimes most of the time yeah you know it, uh, it's about vampires living in staten island <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why i don't watch it why because you don't like staten island no i don't like vampire movies they're ridiculous. Well, this is this is spoof, uh, spoof on vampires. I don't either, Charlie, but this is absolutely adorable. Oh, adorable Believe vampires. Not a superpowers <laughs> or a vampires person, right, Alex? Yeah. I couldn't get that's another show that I couldn't get her to watch. And finally one day she went, Oh, okay. And then she watched another one, another one. She said, This is hilarious. Are there any more? What's it it's, called again? Uh, what we do in the shadows it's basically the vampire version of the office it's a mockumentary thing yeah yeah, yeah but, and they live you, you, in Staten island it's yeah it's it, it, some of it's pretty funny yeah and they're they're, they're all pretty inept <laughs> uh, when it comes to being vampires you know uh um, I just have to interject. This is completely changing the subject, but sure, I just right. pulled my laptop up and I saw this headline that that kid, that kid, that guy that was participating in the Capitol riot. Yeah. The, one with the Buffalo hat, like Fred Flintstone's Buffalo hat. Right. Four years. Well, he claimed his defense claims that he actually was that Trump was his first love. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? And he's saying that he basically is comparing his feelings like for trump like it would be like a first love he had a yeah. fond i want to talk about trump first love man well, no, this is just getting spooky now yeah and they can be in prison together yeah yeah, yeah. he must <laughs> he must have loved the apprentice and fell in love with the fellow who hosted it yeah whatever yeah. The first love, and the quote is, the first love always, always maintains a tender and soft spot in the heart of the lover. Oh, like, that's a defense? I'm going to vomit. Is that a defense? <laughs> that, it says Al Watkins made a bizarre claim at a news conference after he pleaded guilty. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's a lawyer. He's going to get, like, 50 months or something like that? Yeah. 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 He said he also had experienced mental health problems and had been seduced by Mr. Trump. Oh, I... yeah, but Mr. Mr. Trump had nothing to do with the Capitol riot, right. so don't <laughs> say that he did That's or right. convinced me to go to the Capitol and break into the Capitol building. You yeah. notice how how Trump? I hate to bring up Trump because he never gets mentioned uh, on the show. I know. 
didn't really want to bring it up, but I just thought that was bizarre. I had just that, that Labor bizarre. Day. The, the thing to keep your eye out on right now, so the unemployment benefits are all coming to an end and the right wing jackasses are claiming that it's because all these people are high on the lamb that they're not going back to work. It's not going to change the unemployment numbers. Uh-huh. They did have this guy on, on uh, CBS Sunday morning who was not working. And he started collecting all the various benefits and was getting what a thousand a week or something. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he said, I have no reason to go back to work. I, it, but what he was doing is he was studying for another profession. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that, one that wants to be a nurse. I don't know. Did he want to be a nurse or what was he, he wanted to be something? I thought I it was, was a nurse. I don't think it was a nurse, but anyway, he was making that much money and I'm going, don't broadcast this because then these guys like, you know, these Republicans are going to make a case for it saying, see this guy, thousand dollars a it's week. Right. The eviction notices are going to start coming countrywide. Yep. Not in New York. No eviction notices for New York. They said no. Not until uh, I think January. Wow. Yeah. About the time our trial will be over. Yeah. Put people out in the cold. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> What? Is it good put people out in the cold in January? That's a good yes. idea. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, I you know, I mean, uh, I just I I just how can people be so cruel to other people? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, but what about the small landlord who has these people getting the, again, you're saying a thousand dollars a week and they're not paying their rent. Right. No, but the billions of dollars that were earmarked for this should go directly to the landlords. Right. At- Forgive the rent from the tenant. The yeah. money That's not works. how it works. The okay. money's out there. It's the, land, the landlords don't know how to get it. Only spend five percent of the allocated. Well, did, wait a minute. The landlords. The landlords can get money, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but but they made it so they made it very difficult to be able to yeah, collect it. It's, it's a complicated. You no, know, I'm talking about the guy who has an apartment building with three apartments. Yeah, he. There's funds out there for that guy, if he can figure out how to get them. Yeah, if he can figure out how to get them. Yeah, well, they only spend five percent of the that. paperwork. Well, they should make it just as easy for them to get their money as it is for the people who uh, are uh, not to pay their money. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, but but if these land, let me ask you this: if these landlords get money from the government because they are not getting money from their Tenants. Tenants. Uh, does the um, um, it, it, okay? So they don't have to pay. The landlords are getting the money from the government. Now the eviction time is over. With are they allowed to go back and retroactively get that money, or because no. the money from the government they can't? Well, no, because they already got their rent quote right. paid by the government. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I don't know how that any of that works. Since I'm just thinking of the guy again who has that little apartment years. building somewhere in Queens with yeah. like three tenants, you know, mm-hmm. and the tenants are refusing to pay that fellow rent. Right. right. A lot of banks that did car leases told people you can defer three months, six months of your car lease to the end of the lease and have extra payments because the banks misunderstood the rules. So now you get to the end of your car lease, it's time to turn it in. And at that moment, you owe those months that were deferred. You can't like continue to pay for three months and keep the car for three more months. Right. So I know people that, that have real expensive car leases coming to an end and they're going to have to co- cough up a couple thousand dollars to get out of their lease mm-hmm. or buy the car outright. Yeah. Well, you know, it was all miscommunicated. Car- yeah. The price of used cars is crazy right now. Yeah, uh, Shecky, you were planning. Shecky was planning on going to Europe, but changed yes. his mind. But Europe doesn't want us. It, well, no, well, what's happening? I mean, you, could could you get in? Is in Italy, right? Well, in Italy, I would have to get COVID tested. I think two days before I left, and it's then get COVID home. tested on my way out the door back to America. And I didn't want to have that stress on me about, can I get out of this country? Right. A lot of people are not able to <laughs> You know, get am out. I going to get a false positive possibly? You know, because yeah. I don't have COVID. 
<laughs> but, but then isn't isn't the European Union haven't they just uh, stopped letting Americans come into No, Italy will allow you in which is part of the EU. <laughs> Each country can make their own rules. Yeah, but it's their general rule that nobody should be allowed in, right? No, not not really. Italy is wide open, but you have to be tested on the way in. Mm -hmm. Get something called like a green pass or some piece of paper. Yeah. But then again, to get back in the U.S., you've got to get tested on the way out. I decided mm -hmm. I, I didn't I want to go to through that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And if you do get a false positive, you have to stay for 14 days on your own dime. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I might not have COVID, but I might get a false positive. Yeah. Can't they test retest you immediately on that? And see? I don't think so. I don't think they'll do that. Who I was it that I heard got got a false positive, and then they Jeff. went back? I think it was our friend yeah. Jeff, yeah, Jeff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeff. And then he went back and got another test, and it was <laughs> negative. So then they gave him a third test to make sure the second test wasn't false, and he got negative again. So Did I think study, study a little bit harder the second and third time. Yeah. <laughs> what? He studied harder. He studied harder. <laughs> yes. I, I think I think it was those crappy kits that Brian sells. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. Hold on a second. Man Mandy's trying to say something. Go ahead. Last summer, the three people I had lunch with for like an hour and a half, two hour lunch, all tested positive. Wow. Um, Right when I was with, like, they went and got tested, like, the next day because they learned that they were exposed, that they had been exposed. So then I had to quarantine for, like, two weeks from work because but they all had positive tests. Mine was negative. And then they all ended up getting COVID. COVID? Like, they, they ended up getting it again because they worked in a real estate office. So a lot of people... Wow. And then they actually had symptoms. So they were all convinced that those were that those that batch of tests was messed up. It was in July of last year. Mm. So it was still kind of early on in the testing. So you everyone... had to stay home and not go to work. Did you just do all your work from home? Well, I worked at night. I went in at night because I'm only five minutes from my office. So, okay. so they they couldn't have me not just not work. I don't have it all set up here. But yeah, it was a, such a nightmare. Because I don't think they had it. I don't. And when you left in the morning, did you have to disinfect your area? Well, that was the other thing. I said, okay, I'm going to come straight to my my office, stay in my office. I'm not touching anything else. I'll sanitize the doorknob. <laughs> yeah. When I'm still doing all that. And that's what they did. They sanitized my office. They had a company come in and do it. And then when I would go in, I could tell people had been in there. <laughs> I'm like, y'all mm -hmm. are supposed to be in here, but. Anyway, y'all, y'all, that's that's Georgia folks, y'all. <laughs> so, I was noticing your shirt. That's does it say that your birth year on it? Yeah, this is uh, yes, nineteen thirty nine. Yeah, nineteen thirty nine. Oh my god! In this, oh, sure. <laughs> that's so funny. I was just talking to this friend of mine, and he said that he had a shirt that said vintage vintage nineteen sixty nine, and that he didn't like wearing it because he didn't like broadcasting that he was born in nineteen sixty nine. Well, I've gotten to the point where I don't give a good goddamn. But I just <laughs> that's yeah. funny that we were just I, talking about that hey, like hours hey, ago wearing don't, one. Don't I look look fifty to you? <laughs> Hey, Alex, if it makes you feel better, my dad was born in 39 also. No, really? Oh, see, that, was, oh, see, that was worse than my joke. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I flipped him off two times. And that was the last he's, time. He's still alive. Yeah. He's still alive, Alex. Wait a minute. Do you know what that is? That's I got to be careful. I might, I might get punished. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say, Alex? I didn't hear it. I said, you know what this is? What this what? is? That's two of those. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Dad. Oh, is, man. is your father the same age as me? Yeah. How old are you? 55. Oh, I guess that could be. Yeah. 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 My mom was born in 1940. 
Cut the show. You're going to cut the show now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Say please. goodbye, everybody. Yeah, Great to see everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Yes, happy Labor Day. <laughs> Glad no one here is going into labor today. Here. This show today. Wow. <laughs> Uh, it's Len, a celebration. Len, how old were your parents? <laughs> my, my mother is still alive. She is going to be 94 in November. Oh, thank 19, God. 19, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy she's 94, but I'm even happier she's 94. How about you, uh, Charlie? Well, my mom would be 101 if she were still alive. Okay, so wow. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. And uh, 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 Brian, how about your Oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know. No, she, she so she had me when she was 25 and I'm 50 something. So about 78, 79, I guess she would have Oh been. good, good. So I could date her is what you're saying. Like <laughs> hey, she was she was hot. Wait, what what Mandy? I like how he said I'm I'm 50 something. Just to yeah, catch me off. He asked me all the time. I always say 52, <laughs> three, four, something like that. Hey, well, listen, <laughs> our, our, our little hour <laughs> chat is up here. And I, I thank you all for joining me on a day when we don't have as many people as we normally have because they're out actually having a life. <laughs> well, it's for Shoshana after all. What does your I, shirt I say, Lynn? Here. I do what I do what I want. Oh, what I want. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> the best one. Thank you, best. man. I says Adidas. Nice. My cap says Cepheid. <laughs> Very good. That's, nice. That's your. These are great caps. Do you have them in other colors too? No. <laughs> oh wow! I love this cap. I love the cut on it and everything. This is his yeah. company. I get more. I, I just walk around since there's nobody at work anymore. I just walk around and see staplers I need and stuff like that. Really oh, nice. okay. Yeah. It takes, <laughs> nobody steals. questions me because I've been there so long. So it's nice. Steal stuff from work. Yeah. Really, thank you. Thank you to Charlie Wallace, Andrew Deutsch, uh, Marjorie Miller, who just happens to be married to me. Lucky her. Uh, Brian Neary and the lovely and attractive Mandy's iPhone. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody, everybody give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye at you and say goodbye to the audience as well thank yeah. you all for having me bye, bye. Have a great week <laughs>